known and I've known it in 40 years, I tell you, go. Here it is, July the 20th, 1830, a year ago. Two foot higher than now. That's what Sir John Privet's done with his dikes and irrigating. Maybe, Tulliver, maybe. But you'll gain nothing by hot temper. But you can't run mill without water. We turn at half speed as it is. It'll ruin me if he isn't stopped. That's why we're holding a meeting here today. You can trust Mr. Riley to do what's fair between you and Sir John. I trust nobody. <laughs> Luke, why, what? I don't know. She's, 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 she's gone down the rabbit hole after summer. Maggie, little wench. What's all this? It's Tom's rabbit, Father. We've gone down the hole. Father, what do you think Tom say? Maggie? What will your mother say? Uh, yes, Mother. Mercy on us, look at the child. And a frock iron this very morning. <laughs> and there's no cause for you to laugh. Go in at once, you little plague. Father, you said I could go and look to Miss Thompson's school. I've been already now. Let her go and meet her brother, Bessie. The little wench is all right. All right, indeed. I die of shame if a child of mine was seen at some dogs like this. Come along. Looks like as if you'll have to go by yourself, Luke. Yes, sir. Mr. Stoner, Mr. Wentworth? I do. I called them in to sit with me. I see. Well, I have nothing against them. Good day, Tullivert. Good day, Sir John. Mr. Wakeham for me, Mr. Gore for you. Let you see the case fairly put. I suppose it should. Well, gentlemen, suppose we get on with it. Will you please step inside? In view of these facts, I submit that my client is justified. Well, gentlemen, Mr. Wakeham's argument convinces me. Sir John Pivot, in my opinion, clearly has water rights between these points. I'm afraid, Tulliver, the facts are against you. Right. I know it's plain justice, and I'll stand for that again, all of you. You'll be a fool, Tulliver. You agree to accept Riley's word? My mill's been here a hundred years. Now you want to starve her water. Well, you shan't. Are you going into court, then? There are precedents, you know. For example, Bell versus Lamson. Ninth year of George the First. What's George the First got to do with it? Have I got a case at law? Possibly. Then I sue. You agreed to this meeting? Why not be a man and abide by it? I'm as good a man as you are, Wakeham, and I'm going to fight. I'm sorry, Tulliver, for your own sake, that you're taking it this way. Here we go, Sir John. Yes. Take my word for it, Tulliver. You have no case. This will cost time and money, Tulliver. Remember, Sir John's a big man. Big or not, I'll best him. As you please. But don't blame me. Your servant, madam. The run is against you. He's been bought. Depend on it. Well, keep away from the law anyway, Mr. Tulliver. Well, the law's honest. If lawyers aren't, don't fret, woman. Yes, but, but Tom I... will be here any minute now. And your fangled family stuck up a lot. You no cause to talk like that about my folk, Mr. Tulliver. Quizzes, that's what they are. All is telling me what to do with my own family and my own mill. That advice about Tom will be very helpful. I want no advice about Tom. I'm going to make a scholar of him. One is going to start to wake him and he's like, one of them smart businessmen is his all profits and no outlay, save for a high stool and a big watch chain. Where is Tom? Hey, I'm Master Tom. Yes, my sweet lad. Hello, sir. Hello, Hello. mother. Hello. Be honest, what's the lad done with his vest? Uh, don't he worry, mother. The lad's all right. My word. Six months have made a difference to you. You'll be a man in no time. Why can't I leave school, father? Work at the mill with you and Luke. Time enough for that lad when you're a scholar. Then you can help your father with lawsuits and arbitrations and such. But I don't want to be a lawyer, father. Tom, I'm Oh, Maggie. Don't go far away, Tom. You must be here to meet your aunts and uncles when they come. What are they coming for? I don't want to see them. Oh, Tom, I'm so glad to see you. You did that on purpose. Oh, no, I didn't. Aren't you glad to see me, Tom? Look how clumsy. Oh, Tom, please be kind to me. I do love you so. You what? Oh, all right, I forgive you. Hello, Bob Dickens. Hello, Master Tom. When did you get back from school? Today. What have you got there? A halfpenny. Earned it holding a gentleman's horse. Hello, Miss Maggie. Hello, Bob. Toss for the halfpenny. Toss. All right. Heads 
saw Tails. Tails. It was him. Walking well, it was Tails. Give me that hat then. I shall. You shall. I shall. You shall. Tom, leave him alone. Tom, stop it. Tom, Tom, stop it. Now will you give me that hat then? Take it. I don't want it. You give it to me. Give it to me. There. I don't want your hat then. But I hate it cheap. I won't see you anymore. Did he hurt you, Bob? No, miss. Tom doesn't ever mean to hurt people. He just wants to make them do things his way. I see, Miss Maggie. Bye, Bob. Goodbye, Miss Maggie. That wasn't fair. Why not? You cheated. He's smaller than you. Well, you're not. You want a fight? No, I'm not much of a fighter. Got a lame foot, eh? All right, I won't fight you then. Let me ride your pony. All right. I'm Tom Tulliver. This is my sister Maggie. What's your name? Philip Wakem. Are you Lawyer Wakem's son? Yes. Your father's a rascal. My father said so. Oh, but Tom, you shouldn't say that. My father's no rascal. He's a lawyer. My father said all lawyers are rascals. Come along, Maggie. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't be cross with Tom. You're nicer than your brother. I like you. I like you, too. Maggie! Uh, yes, Tom. Bye. Hi, Philip. Mr. Glade, you're very welcome. How do you do? Take off your bonnet, Mr. Glade. You'll excuse me, Mr. Tulliver. This house is apt to be drafty. Your hat? Thank you, ma'am. There's nothing special for dinner, I hope. Our sisters wouldn't wish to encourage extravagance in this house. But this is You need I... to be careful with a husband who's daft and naughty. Ah, roast beef. Roast oh, beef? Yes. On a weekday, sister. It's simple. If Mr. Tulliver will always have the best, while he can pay for it. Well, my savings won't help to keep your children from want. But he's a right to do as he likes in his own house, Jane. And I have a right to say what I think about it. I put 500 pounds of my money in Tulliver's mill, and it might as well be water for all the stock he takes of it. There we are, Gritty. Look, Mrs. Tulliver's sisters are here. Perhaps we'd better not go in. Mr. Tulliver's your brother, ain't he? I know, but they always make me feel so... There, there, Gritty. Don't worry. You'll be all right. <laughs> there. Now you're fit to sit with Christian folk. I'd bow my head in shame if you were my little girl. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad I'm not. Go and sit down. Mr. Glenn? No, thank you, sister. Mr. Dean? Thank you. I suppose that's a scene that you'll come. Now go and sit up. And one spot of gravy on either of you, and you'll see what will happen. Go along. Oh, you're taking your medicine. Oh, no, I'm not. You all know my sister and Mr. Moss. The dinner will be ready in a minute or two. Perhaps you'd like to tell the folks what you're thinking of doing with Tom. Certainly. I don't mind telling anybody what I intend to do with my own son. <laughs> Very obliging, I'm sure. I'm sending him to the Reverend Mr. Stellan's Academy. He's a clever fellow, I'm told, and it'll put Tom up to most things. You'll have to pay a swinging half-yearly bill then, Tulliver. And there are two half-years in every year. If I may be allowed to speak, <laughs> and it's seldom as I am, I should like to know what good is to come to the boy educating him about his fortune. Do take a drop more of the cowslip wine, Sister Glegg. No, I don't hold with heavy drinking. Do my glass up, Bessie. I'm going to give my Tom an education as will enable him to stand up to the lawyers in such folk. And put me up to a notion now and then. But it'd be a fine deal better for some folks if they'd let the lawyers alone. Oh. Bring on the roast, desire. Yes, ma'am. Hundred pounds a year it'll cost me. But I look on it as an investment. Tom's education will be so much capital to us. Aye, there's something to that. When land is gone and money is spent, then learning is most excellent. <laughs> Mr. Glegg, I wonder at you. Jesting when you see your own king going headlong to ruin. If you mean me by that, you needn't fret. I can manage my own affairs. Now, we all take our places. Come on, Grizzly. Sit on my right hand. It's only right and proper as you're my sister. Mr. T, I meant that Sister Glegg. Never mind me, Bessie. I'm not particular. <clears throat> I know I come to think of it, Tulliver. Uh, somebody said that Wakeham was sending his son to a party. Wasn't his name Stelling, sir? I fancy it was. Wakeham's a scoundrel, but he knows what's what. Tell me the name of his butcher, and I'll tell you where to get your meat. He wake him sending his son to Stellings. That's the place for Tom. My advice is never taken, so I don't give it. It'll be the first time, then. It's 
the only thing you're good at giving. Maybe I'm too good at lending, though. I've lent money when I might repent. You've got your bond for it? Have you had your five percent? Meg, I'm sure that... Bessie, I pity you. I do indeed. Sisters have no call to be quarrelsome. Then one sister should never, never be insulted. Who wants to insult you? It's you as won't leave folk alone. Must be forever known at them. I quarrel with no woman who keeps her place. Keep my place, indeed. <laughs> Though I've got a husband who'll hear me abused by them as I've married above them. My family's as good as yours and better. It hasn't got a bad-tempered woman in it. Oh, Mr. Greg, are you going to sit there and hear me swore at? Be quiet! I won't stand another moment in this house. Oh, Mr. Sure, let I... her go, let her go. You are not one of them anymore. Mr. Gregg, I beg you. All that I've been in your house, Mrs. Tulliver. Mr. Tulliver, I've troubled you for the return of my money. Oh. Mr. G? Oh, my pulse. I'm going to have a fit. Well, don't have it here, Sophie. Let's go. Mr. Dean, take us home. I won't have my child's ear sullied. Mr. Dean, Let I... them go on. Good riddance. Interfere in a lot of duties. Have some beef. Tom, Maggie. You heard what she said, Mr. Tulliver. She wants her money back. And I'm sure I don't know where you're going to get it. Unless you come on your sister for it. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'll get it without coming on Gritty. I'd never be hard on you, Gritty. Tom, when you grow to be a man, lad, remember how I treated my sister. And do the same by Maggie. Yes, sir. I'll always be kind to Maggie. Now, Mr. Tulliver, if you sign there, Mr. Jenkins will pay over the 500 pounds. You're a newcomer to some dogs, Mr. Jenkins. But you can take it from me. You're lending your money on the finest mill in the county. Yes, yes. So I've advised our friend. When I want advice, I'll get it from my own lawyer. Quite so. Now, will you take this, or shall I hand it over to Mr. Wakeham? Give it to me. Wait a minute. What's Wakeham got to do with it? Mr. Wakeham is my lawyer. I make no bond that Wakeham has a finger in. But Mr. Jenkins lending the money. He can keep it. My money's as good as the next man's. What have Wakeham's had to do with it? Then I'll waste no more of my time. Get the money elsewhere. No, 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 I can't. Money doesn't go on blackberry bushes. Now, just a moment. If you want to pay your debt to Mrs. Craig, it's Jenkins's money or none. Right. I won't have that woman crowing over me. Here, get it. Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Tulliver has changed his mind. Time down, eh? Thought he would. Five hundred pounds is five hundred pounds. Even to the gentry. Or oh, them as thinks themselves gentry. There's your money. And I'll thank you to pay the interest, regular and punctual. Good day to you, Mr. Tulliver. Now then, your suit against Sir John. Here are the pleas. In 1743, Mr. Justice Worthy... Never mind about that. When will he come before the court? The law is never hasty. It will take time. Sir John is determined to fight it through. While he goes on robbing my mill of water. Unfortunate, but inevitable. The damages, however, should be substantial. If we win... If we win, we must win gold. Don't let's have any nonsense about that. Mr. Stellin, I'm Mr. Tulliver. Yes, sir. Will you come in, please? Hi, I will. Just step in. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is a funny place. Maggie, don't be forward. I'll just tell him you're here. Thank you. Now, you wait here, Maggie. Uh, you mind my act. There's a good little winch. Come this way, please. Uh, Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom. Come on, come on. Hmm, Mr. Tulliver. And so this is Tom. Fine, Mr. Tulliver, fine. He does you credit. Hello, Philip. Maggie. Father. 
father brought me to say goodbye to Tom. I'm so glad. Oh, they're free dogs. Yes, the Market Square. It's just like us. You're very clever. Would you like me to draw your picture? Could you? Yes. Oh, please do. We'll just sit down there in the light. Now, let me have your face just a little round here. That's it. Oh, don't make a face. I'm not making a face. Never had much education myself, but aren't my lad to be a match for the lawyers and such? To be sure. Now, Tom, go along to the day room. Your father and I have some little matters to discuss. Uh, run along, Tom, run along. Yes, sir. Oh, don't sit still, Maggie. Please hurry, Philip. Nearly finished. Tom, look what Philip's done. What is it? Why, why, it's Maggie. Philip, it's wonderful. I wish somebody would teach me to draw like that. Oh, you can draw without teaching. I never learned. I'm sure I could do it if I tried. It's easy. All you have to do is to look at the things and then draw them. Let me show you. Tom? Yes, sir? This is Philip Wakeman, Father. Oh, I. Come on, Maggie, it's time to go. See, Father? Look, a picture of me. Isn't it wonderful? Well, I suppose it is. May I keep it? Uh, of course you may. Thank you. Come on. Bye, Philip. Bye, Maggie. Come on, little wench. Well, he be civil to you. It's only right, lad, you should be civil back. I wouldn't want you to be unfair to anyone. But he's Wakeham's son. Don't get too thick with him. I don't like the stock. Very well, sir. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye, father. Go on, Maggie. Bye, Tom. Goodbye, Bye. Maggie. <laughs> However, we've lost. Lost. After all these years. Lost. I confess I thought we had the case in our pockets. Oh? Well, what's next? I'm afraid that's the end. The end? What kind of a lawyer do you call yourself? Beaten all ends up by Wakeham? You, you, you cheated me. Don't be a fool, man. You haven't paid me a penny for years, and now you never will. Oh, Sarge, don't you understand? You'll be a bankrupt. Bankrupt? Jenkins has sold his mortgage to Wakeham. Wakeham? Yes, and Wakeham's calling in his money. You, Philip. What is it? A letter, Tom. From Maggie. I know her writing. How is she, Tom? All right. Is that? Is there any message for me? Yeah. Sends a regard. Why'd you look at me like that? Is it news about the lawsuit? Tell me, has my father won? Mr. Tolliver, your sister's here. Maggie. Oh. Maggie. What is it? Anything the matter? I've come to fetch you home, Tom. Home? What for? Father's very ill. The lawsuit is. We haven't lost. Yes. And you knew it, but you hadn't the courage to tell me. You're just like your father. And you're as unreasonable as your father. You leave my father out of this. Well, you leave mine. Oh, stop it. Stop it. This is no question. 
12 hours. It isn't mine. I'm done with the Wickhams. The lot of them. I'm so sorry, Maggie. You couldn't have. I've thought of it so often. I hoped we could go on being friends, but I suppose... Whatever happens, you will think kindly of me, Philip. Of course I will. You surely know. I... I must go now. <laughs> well, Betty, how is he? He doesn't know us anymore. He just lies there. Dumb. Perhaps it's all for the best. If he knew he was being sold up, it might be the death of him. As soon as I knew the furniture was to be sold, I told Bessie I'd buy in the spotted tablecloth. Dear, oh dear. My china sold in that way. It's no use whining. If you keep a bed to lie on, you'll be lucky. Oh, well. What's done can't be undone. Mr. Glegg. If you'll be good enough to let me speak instead of taking the words out of my mouth. All you can look to now, Betty, is charity. That's what Tulliver's brought you to. Where are Tom and Maggie? They ought to be here. Yes, it's right they should know the station they've come to. The sad disgrace having the family initials going about everywhere. The disgrace to have one of the family beggared. <laughs> then why don't you stop it? You often said you might leave us your money if we were dutiful. So why not use it now to save Mother being sold up? What? And lose my five percent? Aunt Gritty. There, there, dear. You tell your Aunt Gritty. Don't let them be so cruel. My dear Maggie, I'm torn in two. We've got three hundred pounds of your father's money. We'll be sold up to pay it. No. Oh, but just. What's this about three hundred pounds? It wasn't his to lend. And no security, you may be sure. There was security. My husband gave a note for it. A note? Then where is it? Your husband's duty is plain, Mrs. Mark. Yes. Tell out and pay up. Yes, yes, my dear, but not so impetuous. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. My father wouldn't want Aunt Quiddy to suffer. He's too ill to speak for himself, but I know. Do you know where that note is? I, I do, but... Betty? Betty, where is that note? It's in the box in his room, I expect. Come on. Don't be the box, Betty, men, so dark. It's locked. Oh. I never always was an untidy fellow. Wish I had me other spectacles. What's this? Here it is. Ah. Oh, shh. Not so loud. Oh. Gently, gently. What, what, what are you doing, Tom? What's happened? Why am I here? It's all right for it's not all right at all. And what are they doing? What do they want with my papers? What's that? It's Marty's note. Give it to me. Give it to me, I tell you. Give it to me. How dare you? Get a candle, Tom. Quick, quick. What's he doing? Tolliver! Quick. <laughs> they gritty. They thought they'd got you, did they? I'll show them. I'll show them. If you can afford to burn money like that, you'll get no help from us. Why do you come here, then? Get it from my father, who's better than the lot of you. You don't want to help him. Tom and I don't want your money, and we don't want you. Get out! Maggie! All right, we'll go. And I won't come back. I should like you to know, Mr. Wakem, as I bear you no ill will on account of my husband's losing. There's the thought of my linen being sold. Quite, but what do you want? Uh, Mr. Tulliver's lying at home, as he might be dead. I'm not defending his hot temper, but... Well? Well, sir, I thought perhaps if you wouldn't foreclose... But this is a matter of business. The money has to be called in. But it would have killed him if you turned him out. You can stay on at the mill as my manager. It would be hard for him to do that, sir. He won't hear your name spoken. He's an obstinate fool. Let him take it or leave it. Sir, what's for good, Mother? You might as well talk to a stone. 
You're his daughter? I am. I'm proud of it. Is your son proud of you, I wonder? Watch your temper, young lady. Or it'll bring you trouble as your father's did. And a lot you care if it does. You've broken my father. Now leave his name alone. That's enough. Come along, Mother. <laughs> Any advance from 15 shillings. 15 shillings I'm bid for this fine lot of Irish linen. As good as new, except for the Tulliver initials. Going, going, gone. 15 shillings, Mr. Jenkins. The last lot in this room, ladies and gentlemen. How much for this armchair? Good, sound Windsor. Five shillings. Five shillings. Six shillings. Six shillings. Seven shillings. Eight shillings. Tanner. Ten shillings. A pound. Oh, thank you. Twenty-five shillings. Twenty-five shillings. Any advance on twenty-five shillings, Mr. Jenkins? No. Going, going. Gone. To the man with a pack, twenty-five shillings. That's all in this room. Now, if you'll just step into the scullery, we'll continue the sale there. You bought quite a lot of things, mister. What name? Never mind the name. I'm paying cash. Good. Where does the stuff go? It stays here. Friend of the family, eh? In a manner of speaking. Bob! Bob Jenkins! Certainly, Miss Maggie. What are you doing here? I was just passing and I thought I'd look in. That was very kind of you. But I thought you'd left some dogs. Why, no, Miss. But I'm a packman now. There's money to be made buying and selling. So I thought that you came on a sad day, Bob. Well, if there's anything I can do. I'm afraid there's little anyone can do for it now. But thank you. Good luck, Master Tom. Goodbye, Bob. Good luck, Miss Maggie. Thank you. Yes. I was just passing by. How much for this table? Did I hear somebody say ten shillings? Eleven shillings. Eleven shillings. Fret yourself, Mr. Tulliver. You that's just out of your bed. The Wakeham's bought my milk. He says he'll let you stay on as manager and give you 30 shillings a week. 30 shillings a week. Thirty shillings a week. Bring me the Bible, Tom. And the pen and ink. Father, you oh. know what the doctor said. I'll serve under Wakeham, and I'll serve him as an honest man, but I'll not forgive him. Mind you this, Tom. Never you forgive him, neither. If you mean to be my son. Now write. Write it in the Bible. Father, it's wicked to curse and bear malice. It's wicked for rascals to prosper. Do as I tell you, Tom. Write. What's that right, Father? Write as your father, Edward Tulliver, took service under James Wakeham. A man was ruined him. Right, as you remember what Wakeham done, and 
You'll make him pay for it, if ever the day comes. Oh, no, Father, you mustn't make Tom write. Be quiet, Maggie. I shall write. Then sign your name. Thomas Tolliver. I want to have my mill. Now you want to see the grain go through, I think it. Yes. You hope Tolliver will speak civil. An ill word will break us. Wait here for me, Philip. Well, we'd better start from up top. Oh, there's Lucy! Lucy! Maggie! Sweet of you to come. It seems I have since I want to see you. Uh, why do you hide from all your friends? I don't think we have many now. Things have changed. I haven't changed. I missed you, Maggie. I missed you, too. But you see, we can't go to other people's houses if we can't afford to ask them here. Don't be a good Maggie. <laughs> Philip! Good afternoon, Lucy. How are you, Maggie? Quite well, thanks, Sir Philip. But where have you been? We've missed you. She shuts herself up in her old mill and refuses to come out of it. Oh, but I don't. I'll let you know changes I want later. Well, you can discharge that for us, one thing. But Luke's been here 40 years. Yeah. We'll get a younger man. Oh, by the way, your wages. We never see you in St. Ogg. I've often looked for you. Father doesn't like me to go very far away. But surely you must go for walk. An hour, perhaps, in the Red Beach. Oh. Come along, Philip. Goodbye, Maggie. Goodbye, Lucy. Goodbye. Lucy. Oh, um. It's like old times seeing you here. Why do you never come near it? You're as bad as Maggie. It's pretty hard going these days. I see. No time for your friends. Well, they think of you. Father's found a place for you. Really? Yes. Oh, splendid, Lucy. Father, Lucy says Uncle Dean's found a place for me. Yes, Uncle Tulliver, at the warehouse. It's very good of him, I'm sure. Now there'll be two of us to pay off the debt. Good lad. It's a big lot. But one day, please, God, we'll settle it. Thank you, Lucy. I hoped I'd find you. I had to see you. You angry? No, how could I be? Friends are few these days. You seem to have forgotten those you have. <laughs> Me, at least. You know, it didn't matter. But so much that I had in my life is gone. The little pleasures, the friendship, even the thoughts I used to cherish. Hopes. Maggie. Why must you be so hard on yourself? <laughs> it's not I, it's the luck of things. We've only one thought at the mill now. How to live. What's happened is never out of my father's mind. I have to help. But how can making yourself miserable help him? Or anyone? He says we're like outcasts. And until he wins back. You mean he wants you to carry on his quarrel? Yes. My father's like that too. But are we to let them live our lives for us? I can't argue about it. I only know I mustn't add to his distress. I don't ask that. You're always in my thoughts, Nick. Do you remember this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what a queer little girl I was. I remember when I looked like that. I really was like a gypsy. Am I like one now? You're far more beautiful than any gypsy. I must go now. I'll be here tomorrow. Will you? I won't promise now. Goodbye, Philip. Goodbye, Maggie.
Afternoon, Master Tom. Hello, Bob. Well, the Peckman's asking us to suit you. Mr. Tom, I've got a bit of likely business at hand, and I've come to ask if you'd like to go past us. What is it? Well, I've got a particular friend, the master of a ship calling at a number of foreign ports, and he's offered to take a shipment of goods to trade for me if I can find 50 pounds captain. Is that the money? I've got 30. If you could find the other 20. Hmm. Sounds good, but where am I going to get 20 pounds? You think you'd rather, my... I'm saving every penny to pay off his creditors. What about Mrs. Glegg? Aunt Glegg? I haven't seen her for months. But she might do it for 6%. Up at a 7 and be sure of it. We try. Of course, ma'am, to a lady of your standing, it looks cheap jack stuff, but that's what's wanted out there. Mr. Tom has planned to make a big profit. Big profit? What do you mean by big profit? Well, maybe it wouldn't seem so big to you, ma'am, but I venture Mr. Tom would be able to pay you 7%. 7%? Mr. Gregg, why was I never told 7% could be got for my money? Well, of course, my dear, if you think it proper to go into trade, and why not? Tom's my nephew, isn't he? Seven percent, you say, Tom? That's what we thought, Aunt Keg. You'll see, ma'am. He'll have cargoes of his own in no time. Well, let me see that piece of net. Oh, it is not good enough for you, ma'am. I'll give you three half crowns for it. If I let you have it for ten shillings, ma'am, you'll be so good as not to tell nobody. I should be the laughing stock of a trade if they knowed it. Very well, but it's a shameful price. Nay, ma'am. I'm making you a present of the article. I am indeed. My profit shaved off as clean as a razor. Very well. There's your money. Thank you, ma'am. So, I let you have 20 pounds, not a shilling more. Seven percent, mind you. And Clegg. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Come on, Bob. Good day to you, ma'am. That was very sweet. It reminded me of our courting days. Do you remember that day? Mr. Glegg, if you're going to be undelicate, I wish you'd let me know. Did you really lose your profit on that net? Not me. I gained half a crown for it at Latham. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making a face. I'm not making a face. <laughs> it's nearly finished. All I can do here, I'll bring it on Thursday. I'm afraid I won't be coming here anymore, Philip. Why not? The secrecy is making me wretched. If Tom or my father knew... Matt, surely you don't mean I'm not to see you again? I do want to see you, Philip, but... I can't give you up, Matt. I love you. I've always loved you. Nothing has ever meant so much. Oh, I've been so lonely. Come on, Tommy. Peggy! Tom, how could you? How brave of you. I'm sorry. You're sorry for no one but yourself. What right have you to interfere in my sister's life? And what right have you? That's my business. Tom, please. Keep quiet. Oh, why can't we talk reasonably? Try to save our lives from a quarrel we never made. If you ever so much as speak to Maggie again, Tom! I'll... Come with me. Well, that you'll never speak another word to Philip Wakeman. Reason has nothing to do with it. I hate the waiting. But I don't. Then you should. Do as I tell you. I will not. All right. Let's see what Father has to say. Maggie? Maggie! Where's my little wench?
You've waited long. But me and my son pledged ourselves you shouldn't wait in vain. Today, there's not a debt due to one of you that we can't pay. It's here. Every penny of it. It's a proud day for me. I'm the prouder that my boy has worked with me. So as it might come. Richard Agnew? Here. Twenty pounds, eight and sevenpence. Twenty pounds, eight and sevenpence. Frederick Buttonshaw? Here. Yeah. I told you, Tulliver, what had come of letting that shaft run loose. Ruin. Can't you use a little method in your work? Run the place yourself. What? It's an honest calling anyway. Not it's drunk. No, wait. Not drunk. Dead sober. And I've done with your dirty service. Damn good riddance. Now hold your ignorant tongue and let me pass. I'll tell you first what... Sure. Let me pass, your blockhead, or I'll write it down. What you deserved. I'll have you in jail, Oliver. It'll be worth it. Tell them I thrashed you. Tell them I'm made in the world. Now go. Father. Let the doctor quickly, mother. Wait, mother. It's too late. Your father's given me a junior partnership. How wonderful! I had to come and tell you. And, and I've asked if he let the firm use the Tulliver name. Will he? If Walker doesn't object. If it make Aunt Bessie so happy, I'll call her now. No, uh, uh, there's something else I couldn't tell you before. Lucy, you do like me, don't you? Why, Tom, I love you. You're my cousin. Would you marry me? No question of that. And besides... There's someone else. Yes, Stephen Guest. We're to be married very soon. Mm -hmm. Stephen Guest. Stephen. Well, Rembrandt, my friend. I didn't know you were home. Yes, just a week. And none too soon after three years of that infernal climate. Well, you're still a hermit, Philip. Your friends tell me they never see you. I find these friends more amusing than most. <laughs> now, look. No. It's not alive. Aha, uh -huh, lady. And <laughs> not for profane eyes. But don't be alarmed. I'm no longer dangerous. Philip, I'm going to be married. And you're the first. Oh, splendid. Do I know her? Yes, so well, I'm going to ask you to be best man. It's Lucy Dean. Oh, my congratulations, mm. Stephen. But as for my being best man, <laughs> I'm afraid. Oh, nonsense. Now come along. We're going to call on her. You see, I've no misgivings. <laughs> no, but I haven't your reputation. <laughs> Never mind my reputation. Even more beautiful by morning than by candlelight. And now, Philip? Oh, my congratulations, Stephen. Thank you. Tom, you know Stephen. Oh, yes. Good morning. Lucy, I've been persuading Philip to be best man. Splendid, and I've asked Maggie. You will not accept. Yes. What? Maggie will do as I say. I think you'd better do without me, Stephen. Oh, nothing of the sort, Philip. I insist it's become a point of honor. I think I can make him change his mind. I'll try. If there is anything like the brother, she must be singularly active. Maggie, my sweet girl. Mother, darling, it's lovely to see you again. Maggie, Lucy. darling. And so you're going to be married. It's lovely to have you here for the wedding. 
and yet even. Tom, a false prophet, I confess. Here, Mr. My dear, how oh, it is good to see you. Come along, Maggie, we'll help you unpack. Well, that's the lady of the canvas. How did you know? You gave yourself away. <laughs> And you've never seen Philip since Tom made you promise. Not until today. I couldn't give Stephen up that way. You do love Philip. I don't know what I should have done without him. He adores you, Maggie. I could see it in his eyes. Does he come here often? Fairly. He's to be Stephen's best man. But Lucy... I know, Tom. I call it monstrous. But I think I can persuade him. No. You must let me do that. But Lucy set her heart on it. You must make your own choice. But you know what Father would have wished, and you know my feelings. I should only see Philip with other people. Very well, let Lucy have her way. But after the wedding, you must see him no more. If you do, I've done with you, understand? I promise. Good. Tom, you are coming to Lucy's engagement party. I'm sorry, Maggie. I enough to go. I've no more time. Not to give me a kiss. You're quite the most attractive girl I've ever seen. Maggie wanted to see you first, but there were so many people... Oh, please don't apologize. I wish Maggie to do as she pleases. Please, you go and find Maggie and bring her to me. She wants to see you. I'm afraid it's very important. Oh, where is she? Oh, she's just up. I'm very sorry. Um, Mrs. Dean, Mr. Tory would like to have the honor. Of... <laughs> A very bad exchange, I'm afraid. Enchanting. <laughs>
lovely news. Lovely partner. Lovely partner. Sit down here a minute. But I thought you said what you wanted to do. Yes. No. You're very surprised. Indeed. I mean, I didn't know you were like this. I can't tell why, but I expected you to be. Um, unattractive. Stupid, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. Everything's attractive tonight. <laughs> you should see me in my shabby little school. Mm. I think I should surprise you. You'll be surprising if you want. There's love. Yes. Love. Oh, there you are. Did you get what I sent you for? Oh, Lucy, upon my soul, I did. I... Well, I didn't. And now come and dance with me. It's our engagement party, you know. I'm sorry I missed you just now, Philip. Oh, that's all right. Somehow they seem to have rushed me off my feet. I am. I'm so glad. Now we can have a talk. I'm Philip and Maggie in a track. Attractive. Yes. I wish they could marry. That's not like that. Why do you say that? The brother seems to be a difficult enemy. Oh, yes. I wish I could help them. I have it. My wedding present. Wedding present? Yes. Wait a minute, Stephen. I've been wondering what to give me for a wedding present. I've discovered what I want. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, my dear? Dolcott Mill. Dolcott Mill? Bless the child, whatever for? I want Tom to go back there, and it must be done through Philip. That will put Tom in his debt, and the difficulty about him and Maggie will go. Stuff and nonsense. I won't do it. But you will. In another moment, you'll be telling everybody about my engagement to Stephen. I want to see that we've done something to Philip and Maggie, too. Hey, you'll do it, Father. A pretty substantial present, you know. Phil, you're the only one. If Wakem will take a fair price, I'll do it. You darling. I'll go and tell Philip now. So after Lucy's wedding, we're to be strangers. Tom won't listen to anything else. Why do you let him rule your life and ruin mine? Don't say that. Tom and I have suffered so much together that... I know. But you can't build your life, our lives, on that. Love is greater than itself. And I love you. Yes, Philip, but... I always thought you cared for me, too. You let me think. Yes, Philip, but please. I don't want to... Good evening. I see. I'll wait. Philip, I want you. Stephen, you look after Maggie. Come along. Shall we dance? Or maybe go on talking? I, uh, I don't think I want to dance just now. Let's walk a little way. That's very generous. So if you can persuade your father to sell it, I'm sure everything will be all right. Well, I can try. 
He doesn't often refuse me anything. Skinny, you've got to manage it. I'll do my best. I'm very grateful to you. You must go in. Why? Do you find it dull here? No, but I mean... You mean you're frightened? <laughs> you shouldn't be. But you can't stay out here like this. Not when it's so very agreeable. Take me in. I must see you again. Tomorrow. No. Yes. At Lane End. You're very sure of yourself, aren't you? I'm sure you'll be not. I'm sure I shan't. Very creditable, my boy. Quite as good as that London fellow's work. What's his name, the pivot gives so much money for? Oh. <laughs> Who's this? Maggie Tulliver. Aren't the models enough without that girl? Not for me. So that's how you repay my indulgence. You and a Tulliver. Have you no feelings, boy? You know how her father treated me? And now you mean to tell me you're in love with her, I suppose? Yes, I have been for years. I can't marry her. She refused you? No, her brother won't allow it. Nor should I. Besides, my painting isn't very lucrative yet. I can't offer her poverty and... I see. So I am of some use. No. I'm sorry, my boy. I didn't mean that. You've your mother's hair and eyes, Philip. You look very like her sometimes. You loved her very much, didn't you? I married her 28 years ago. There's never been anyone else. Then you know what I'm missing. We must keep together, Philip. Only you know the better part of me. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to sell Dolcup Mill back into their family. What are you talking about? Why should I? Because Tom Tulliver wants it. And it might change his feelings. Well, if it comes to that, I've no use for the mill. It's nothing but anxiety. If they'll pay me for improvements, they shall have it. Thank you, Father. But understand, I'll have no dealings with young Tulliver. If you like to stomach him for his sister's sake, you can. Why did you come here if you think it's wrong? I adore you, Maggie. Even Philip's picture. Oh, don't. When I think of Lucy. What happiness could I give Lucy now? I only know I couldn't bear it. And Philip. Do you love him? He loves me. And I like him too. You much. don't love him. You love me? No. No. We can't all plain truth. I'm gonna tell Lucy. Stephen, I do love you, but. It's impossible. Impossible. You're very alarming today, Stephen. What's the matter? No, sir. I... There's something... Well? Something I must tell you. Philip. Hello. Hello, Philip. Lucy. I've asked him. It's all right. He'll do it. Have you told him about Maggie? Yes. He was furious at first. But did you tell him you wanted to marry Maggie? Yes, I told him everything. Maggie, my father is selling the mill to your Uncle Dean. Yes, Philip has persuaded him. Tom will go back now, and he must change his mind. He never will. But if he does... Listen to me, I must tell you... Don't interrupt. Will you? Will you? But... Yes, Philip. Mr. Snell. Yes, Mr. Tulliver. Well, as good as the Perkins and Company must go forward immediately. We can't afford to offend a new customer. I'll attend to it at once, sir. Deals you do. Oh. I know what you've come for, Lucy. It's no use. You can't behave like this. Philip isn't his father. He's done you no wrong. He got the mill back for you. We've gone over all that before. If Maggie chooses to be a Wakeham, she's done with the Tullivers. Tom, you're a self-righteous prig. Thank goodness you're not my brother, and thank goodness you're not going to be my husband. Good morning.
morning, Lazy. Lucy, dressed for town? I thought we were all going on the river. I've changed our minds. We're not going. What? I want you to see Philip and explain that we can't go. We have important business. But I haven't any business. Oh, yes, you have. To see that Maggie and Philip have a long day together alone. Oh, I see. Well, I'll go to Philip at once. I'll call for you in about an hour. Goodbye. My dear fellow, what is it? Oh, Stevie. I'm glad you came. My head's a wreck. Oh, I'm very sorry. I'm afraid I can't come with you. You make my apologies to Lucy and Maggie. But, Philip, Lucy asked me to I say know. that. I'm no company for anyone today. You take the two girls alone. But Maggie will be so disappointed. I'm sorry. It can't be helped. No. I suppose it can't be Where's Philip? Oh, he's sorry. He can't come. He asked me to explain. But Lucy isn't coming either. I can't go with you alone. Of course you can. There's no harm in it. I didn't know there was any harm. Very well, then. Come along. from Scotland, and I thought I'd let you have the first chance. A prettier line as ever you've seen, and they'll make a handsome profit. Shh, rain's pretty bad. Well, she hadn't an August for years. Ah. Uh, 
What's this about Miss Tulliver? Friend of yours, isn't she? What do you mean? Haven't you heard? Everybody else says, seemingly, though why people want to talk so much, I really can't understand. All around the town it is. What is? Well, it seems she's gone off with a young gentleman. A Mr. Guest, they say. Two days ago. Hasn't been seen since. Well, what about it? Oh, I'm saying nothing, mind you, but it don't seem quite proper like. The town's a regular bad. That'll do. And I tell you, there's nobody in this town good enough to talk bad about Miss Maggie. Well, about the shawls. I shan't be taking any. But that'll be good enough. And you call here again. <laughs> now, out you go. Well, Tom? She's back. What? She came in on the coach from Mudport. Where is she? I don't know. Something's wrong. Doesn't like Maggie not to let her mother know. She cares for nobody but herself. See what she's done to Lucy, her own cousin. Like enough to lose her reason, Doctor says. She's no right to take Lucy's man away. I'll not deny that. I'd rather see her married to Stephen Guest than Philip Wakeham. My girl! What? Where's Stephen Guest? I don't know. What? I... I left him in Mudport. And you're not married? No. Changed his mind, eh? No, he... And now he sent you home again, not wanted. That's not true. The storm carried us out to sea. I came home as soon as I could. I don't believe you. It took your fancy to go off with Guest, and now you find you don't take his, after all. No. Go and see what you've done to Lucy. I came home because of Lucy. You came home because he didn't want you. Nor do we. You've brought shame on us. Now go. Tom, you can't. Go. Wait, Mother. I see that she doesn't want for anything. But for the rest, I'm done with it. You and Bob have been good, Mrs. Jakin. I shan't forget it. It'll be nicer for you at the rectory. The Reverend Ken's children will make a darling pair for you to teach. It's very kind of him. He says the people may talk, but he shouldn't let it make any difference. It'll give me a little hope again. A note for you, Miss Maggie. What is it, Miss? What's wrong? After consultation with leading members of his congregation, Mr. Ken feels that it would be inadvisable. Leading members? Wicked old cats? I'd like to twist their canting tongues for them. Yes? What do you want? It's about Maggie. My sister's no concern of yours. Maybe, but she is of yours at least. You've turned her out of her own home. You've made her name a town scandal. She deserves it. If Maggie's made to suffer anymore, I won't answer for the consequences. You won't answer. There's danger, I tell you. Desperate danger. Get that into your smug, narrow mind. Now will you go? Very well, if you won't listen. But remember, Maggie's got no one to turn to but you. And if she comes to harm, it'll be your miserable doing. Come in. Maggie. You shouldn't have come. Bless you. Don't grieve. I understand. Lucia. No. Don't explain. In any case. I love you. And you must forgive Stephen, too. That won't find his love again. Who knows? I do. He loves you, Maggie. You belong to each other. That can never be. You must believe that. I don't even know where he is. He's gone away. I told him to go, but... He'll come back to you. I think not. I don't even wish it to Lucy. No, I don't. But Maggie, darling, this mustn't make any difference to us, ever. <laughs> Maggie. 
Mother's taking me away tomorrow. When I return, I shall see you often. Please, if you can. I promise.
taking the risk. There's no risk I wouldn't take for you. I ought to be grateful. I am. I love you. Why should you after all that's happened? I don't want to go on. Please try. I can't. You must. I tell you it's no use. It is. It is. You mustn't give up now. I shouldn't. Because I need you. Need me. With all my soul. We'll find our lives again, together. Only that for me. It must be. Then I will try. My God. I need not tell you that. After this, I may never return to St. Ogg's. However that may be, I tell you again that Maggie was blameless. She wouldn't even listen to my folly. I swear that this is the truth. Let everyone know it. Your Stephen Guest. That's his letter. I thought you'd all wish to hear it. <laughs>